Good evening. We are here in sunny Folsom, California. And this evening, two missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have consented to come and tell us a little about what they're doing here and how they feel being here in Sacramento and perhaps bear their testimonies of Jesus Christ. And so they have willingly said they will offer a few questions. What you have here on your left is Sister Hutchins and on your right is <laughs> Sister Brower. So we are going to start with Sister Brower this evening and I'm going to ask her a few questions. So, Sister Brower, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, do you have an exciting conversion story that you'd like to share? Yeah, sure. Um, this one took place in the second area I served in, um, which was in Oroville, California. And in this area, we, uh, we were teaching a lot of people. And we were going, working off of a list of uh, members that we hadn't seen in a long time at church. And we went over to their house, and um, this, this family, their name is the McDonald's. We went over and we knocked on their door, and, and actually we didn't knock on their door. Their, um, the husband was sitting outside with his two-year-old son, and they were just sitting on the back of the truck, and the two-year-old was running around playing. And he started talking to, to this man, and his name was Kyle. And first we just went over to see his wife, so he goes inside and he grabs his wife and they come out and we were just sitting around talking and, and just getting to know one another and, and just asking about church and different related things. And Misty, the wife, just didn't seem very interested or it was just off. And so we turned over to Kyle and started talking to him about um, Jesus Christ and kind of what how he felt about who he was as a person and he expressed some you know feelings of um, he didn't know if he was there and there was just things in his past that he had a hard time believing that there was a God and we pretty much went through a lot of material we we touched on a lot of subjects when we left we left him with pretty much every pamphlet of except for the first one and and some other things that that we just felt while we were there and we were probably there for a good two hours just sitting around talking and we left and we didn't expect to hear from them again um, and we thought maybe we'll stop by in three weeks or so and just about a day or two later we get this call and and it's Misty the wife and she's she's calling us saying that Kyle had picked up every material that we left and has read everything and wants to take the lessons and she's so surprised over their 20 years or so of marriage that he's never been religious, never believed that there was really a God or someone there. And that, you know, it's kind of changed his mind a little bit. So we go over and we start teaching the lessons. And it was awesome just seeing someone truly, you know, just having that change of heart, you know, it's just never thought that he would believe in Jesus Christ or my father and then changing and not only was he baptized later on but his son as well and that family became a very strong unit in the church thank you what an inspiring story you know this uh, video being shown worldwide will undoubtedly be seen by your brothers and sisters if you have them and your aunts and uncles and your family and your friends you may want to address your friends or younger siblings who are at home or people who haven't gone on missions yet um, share with them the excitement of being on a mission and uh, you're going to, you know, it has great potential. What's the best part about having a companion? The best part, I think for me, I moved a lot growing up a little bit and it's the first time I've really had a, just a friend. Uh, I've never had a best friend growing up and it's nice to just know that someone's going to be there to have your back at all times and I've never really had that. And it's just great to have a friend with you always that, you know, if it's a good or a bad situation, you can always turn to them and be like, how are you doing? <laughs> how are you feeling? And that's an awesome, awesome thing. That's great. Speaking of younger brothers and sisters in particular, have you had experiences, to, now that you've had the experiences you've had, what would you say to them or to other young people to excite them about serving on a mission? Um, to excite them, you know, it's, mission's not... I guess completely what I expect. You know, every mission is going to be different for everybody, based off you know why they want to serve or where they go, just different cultures and situations. And I think, you know, the best thing, you know, is to just go and 
just go to serve the Lord. And I just remember praying and never receiving a specific answer that yes, you know, just getting that warm, just burning, you know, feeling this, this is a good thing, but just knowing that, you know, this is a good thing and I don't need that strong confirmation to, to go and do something righteous because um, he knows our hearts and he knows that, you know, if I want to do something good that I'll just go ahead and do it. And so I think that would be my advice, just, you know, go and do, you know, we're not going to get always a very direct answer, but just those simple feelings and knowing that, you know, if you're in the right place and you're doing the right thing, then, you know, you'll be okay. You're in the right place doing the right thing, yes. How do you feel about California and Californians? Um, it's been awesome. Um, my sister wrote me an email once and she said, that California is the right mission for you, and I kind of laughed a little bit. I said, "How how do you know that?" Like I was still trying to figure out if it was the right mission for me, and she said, "It's the people you meet. You're just a very interesting person, and their California sound very interesting and just very different and weird, and and you're a weird person." And I was like, oh, "I guess so. You know, I guess that makes sense. You know, I'm a little bit out there, and and I get to be out there with everybody else, and so it's really awesome." Hmm. You know, we often want our parents to be proud of us. What are you doing that your mom would be proud of? Um, I find myself in a lot of situations where I always, I always think I'm like, what would my mom do in this situation? Um, she never got to serve a full-time mission, but she's an awesome role model. And there's just hard times I hit and I'm like, Wow, what what did my mom do in this situation? And I think, you know, just taking things, you know, and and not making them overwhelm me too much and taking everything a little bit at a time. And I think the the most important thing that I think she probably just most proud of is just just loving the people. You know, when you when you love everybody you just you just give your heart and and that joy then um, you know, life is wonderful, and I know that that's been a blessing in her life, just the love. And, and so every time I come across a situation where uh, there's something crazy going on, I think, what would she do? Mm, thank you for that. What's your favorite part of missionary life besides sharing the gospel? I love all the crazy, awkward situations you get yourself into. Um, someone always said that... You know, dating's awkward, but sorry, being on a mission, being a missionary is probably the most awkward thing you're ever going to do. Um, you know, just all the situations you get yourself in. It, there always seems something more crazy just around the corner, just waiting to happen. And just with all the different people you meet, um, it's just really funny. I had one companion specifically that I'd always seen that she was able to make an awkward situation even more awkward, which I didn't know was quite possible. But, you know, and just, just going out there, like knocking on doors or talking to people. At first you're like, ah, it's a little weird to go up there, but you, you just do it, you know, because honestly they're not going to remember how awkward you were or the moment, but they'll remember the spirit, which is, you know, what we're here doing. At heart, your mission is about serving the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you feel about your Savior, Jesus Christ? I think over my mission, I've... I've grown for a deeper love for the Savior than I've ever felt before. Um, just not only for me, but for those around me. As my thoughts and, you know, desires turn towards others rather than myself, you know, I'm able to see the Savior work more in me than I have before. And, and that just shows me that our Savior loves each of us, and specifically me, and knowing that I can get that help to help those around me. Um, and, you know, that love is infinite, I'm learning. You know, it's unbreakable. No matter if we fall short or if we do something that we wish we hadn't done, we can always change and become better. And even on a mission, uh, we can always continue to become better. For you all who may be just joining us, those wonderful words we've heard were from Sister Brower, full-time missionary of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who consented to come and be interviewed tonight. Thank you for that, Sister Brower. And this is Eben Vischer. Good night.